it's a state of emergency with the Kepler Space Observatory. That could be a wrap, but I'm not going to do that. This is just a quick science vlog. Kepler, as I'm sure you know, the biggest exoplanet hunter out there in space, entered emergency mode and we've only just found out about it. NASA did a routine check-in with the spacecraft and found it's in this emergency state. That's its lowest operational mode, which turns out is also incredibly fuel intensive. It's burning through its fuel really fast, which is never a good thing because we never have enough fuel to be able to do absolutely everything we want. We're very economic with that sort of stuff. Now this obviously isn't great and the NASA scientists over at the Ames Research Center are going to be working furiously to try and get Kepler back into a normal operational mode um, once they've worked out exactly what it is that triggered this emergency state. To make things harder, Kepler's quite far away at the moment. Uh, it takes seven and a half minutes for a signal from Earth to get to Kepler. That gives you an idea about how far away it currently is. So if you want to tell it to do something and then get something back, that's a 13 minute round trip, which must be incredibly infuriating for those guys. I do not envy them. You see, Kepler isn't actually in orbit around the Earth. It technically orbits around the Sun. It's a little bit further away than the Earth is, and that means from our point of view, it sort of drags away. So it's, it's constantly just getting further and further away, though slowly. Now, there are a lot of people saying, oh, Kepler's had a lot of trouble along its lifetime, and yeah, that's fair, but I would say it's kind of up there with a lot of space missions. Space is hard, it's not easy to do stuff, and when you're very far away, you can't just go and send an engineer. I mean, we did do that with Hubble, but Kepler's way too far away to be able to do that. So what are the troubles Kepler's gone through in its lifetime? Um, there were some problems to start with when it launched in 2009 when they first got the data in. Uh, everything was a bit noisier than expected. That was both due to the instrument on board the spacecraft, but also just the stars that they were looking at were, were much noisier than they expected. And so it affected their ability to be able to detect exoplanets through the transit method like they planned. But these sorts of things are what you work out when you put something in space. You can, you can never completely foresee everything that's going to happen, and that's why we have commissioning modes, where we really just suss out how the instruments on board a satellite are performing. So it took a bit longer than usual, than was expected, uh, to get Kepler up and running, but then it was. Now, the initial lifetime of the mission was only going to take us up to 2012, and, and we did that. Uh, and then just past 2012, as often happens with space missions, we say, okay, let's extend it. The thing's still working. We may as well still use it. So we got extended to 2016. But then something bad happens. One of the reaction wheels failed. Now, what's a reaction wheel? Uh, think of it as just a motor with a big mass on the end and you just sort of spin it. Uh, and it's used for orienting the spacecraft or pointing the telescope in the direction that you want it to point. Essentially, uh, because you're spinning up a big mass, conservation of angular momentum will then counter-rotate the entire spacecraft um, and then you can just stop that uh, and you can move these things by just very small amounts and get very precise uh, pointing directions to look at specific stars very, very far away. And that's what Kepler is all about. Now, it had some redundancy, but then another one failed, which was pretty catastrophic, to be honest. It meant they couldn't really use Kepler in the way that they wanted to anymore. And they came up with K2, essentially using the data in a different way, changing the purpose of the mission uh, to do various different things, um, including looking for planets around red dwarf stars, something that I was telling you about in my Superman video, uh, and doing a whole load of other stuff. Particularly what they were doing right around now was pointing it towards the center of the Milky Way galaxy, and then they could coordinate efforts with ground-based telescopes to really delve into the stars that are going on around the center of our galaxy. And this is where everything unfortunately seems to have gone a little bit wrong for Kepler. But I don't think it's all doom and gloom. I think you have to remember that Kepler has done an absolutely fantastic job in expanding our knowledge about the planets that are out there other than around our own star, the Sun. I mean, right now, to this date, we have just over 2,000 confirmed exoplanets. Half of those came from Kepler. 
And then on top of that, Kepler has a whole load of uh, candidate planets, things that we, we need to have another look at, either with Kepler or, or with other ways of looking at the stars, ground-based telescopes, future missions to really be sure that there are planets there. There's an extra 4,000 of those. So really Kepler's done the most to advance our knowledge about how planets form around different stars, where they are, everything like that. So I don't think we should poo-poo on it just because it's had a few hiccups along the way. And in the grand scheme of things, Kepler was actually a very cheap mission of NASA's. It's in their discovery program. That means it, they didn't throw all the money at it to do all of the things. They wanted it to do a very specific set of things. Uh, and it's been incredibly successful at doing those. So I want to say congratulations to Kepler, but I will have my fingers crossed that you get back into a working state. Okay, that was just a quick science vlog to tell you about the uh, Kepler emergency state at the moment. Um, do check out some of the other videos I've done about exoplanets, a Krypton video and a, and a bit about how essentially Kepler's transit method works, where I threw some peanuts in front of a fire. Have a look at those on my channel and do subscribe. I'm currently working on a Game of Thrones video which will be out to coincide with the new series. Thanks.